voice for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. The need for cross-border resolution of compromised financial institutions, I think, was made uh, pretty painfully apparent during the 08 global financial crisis. Rightfully, cross-border resolution is today at the forefront of the international regulatory reform agenda. I thank these witnesses for being with us. During a recent update on the FDIC's efforts to create a framework for the resolution of SIFIs and GZIBs, Chairman Martin Grunberg said that there has been no greater or more important regulatory challenge in the aftermath of the financial crisis than developing the capability for the orderly failure of a systemically important financial institution. Now, I agree with him that this is an issue of paramount importance. However, I question the comment in describing the work to date in solving this cross-border resolution conundrum as the progress has been impressive. I, I wanted to ask Dr. Chuck Raforthy, do you share Chairman Gruenberg's assessment on the progress made on ending too big to fail around the world and eliminating taxpayer liability in the case of a financial downturn, or do you side with the IMF, which believes that there remains considerable additional work, in their words, to be done to establish an effective regime for cross-border resolution? That's a tough trade-off, uh, Mr. Congressman, to choose between the IMF and the FDIC. Uh, what I'd like to say is that it is a very difficult issue. Uh, I have visited uh, the FSB and, and, and Basel. It's a, it's a complex issue. I, I know that uh, much of the cross-border is in a, uh, that we should worry about is in a few countries. So I think there are, uh, Great, there is great movement in the direction to get a cross-border agreement with some of these countries, but it is very difficult. Uh, uh, and I think uh, we have to start somewhere, and we are certainly going in the right direction. Well, then let me ask Dr. Michel, what steps do policymakers around the globe need to take to actually ensure a method of cross-border resolution exists? one that does not place American companies at a competitive disadvantage while still preventing future taxpayer bailouts? Well, on the specific details of the cross-border issue, I, I, I'd have to defer. I, I, I'm not comfortable uh, with, with the specific details there. Um, yeah. But in general, I mean, I think what we need to do is worry about making the American system as competitive as possible. But, and sure. a bankruptcy, uh, bankruptcy law change would be much better than the Title II that we got in Dodd-Frank. Well, let's open it up to the rest of the panel then very quickly. But we had some time to think about this. Ever since 08, it should have been on our mind. So let, let me just uh, talk about that. So I agree with you. In fact, if you look at what the problem was in terms of cross-border with the failure of Lehman, it was which regulators in charge of which assets. That was the major problem. That was the major disruption and confusion. So, and I think that is something that we are really moving to solve, and I think it can be solved. That's different from orderly liquidation, which I think is a pipe dream. Uh, so my own view is, in terms of realpolitik, the only way we're going to solve this problem is with some kind of ring fencing where there's clear allocation of authority over which assets and which liabilities will be adjudicated and controlled by which regulatory entities. And we're gonna ha we can't have a completely fluid international balance sheet. It's simply not pragmatic. So my view is international financial institutions can have a operations that are international, but they have to have legal entities that are well-defined within national borders. Thank you. I'm going to yield back, uh, Mr. Chairman, because I see Mr. Swikert is pensively waiting, and I know time's short. 